Hello, Raleigh. Robert Quartz reporting to you live from your backyard. And I am pleased today to have a special guest uh, and a friend of mine, uh, Annalise Gentili with Conduit for Change. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you so much, Robert Quartz. I am so glad to be here. Well, uh, if I may brag a little bit, we are good friends, but uh, Annalise is a very special person. She is a community builder. She is the kind of person who walks into the room and, and lights it up and carries a party. She's known to create an event or six in one day. <laughs> <laughs> but her business is Conduit for Change, and she helps uh, professionals and, and people with a struggle uh, in life when there's time for change, which is especially important during our quarantine months. Uh, but uh, Annalise, share a little bit with us about what you do in a fuller capacity than I did. Mm. Well, thanks for the great introduction. I think it takes uh, a community builder to know a community builder. So see one another here. Little about me in a nutshell. Uh, I'm an integrative life and leadership coach, and I help people navigate change mindfully and creatively. And in times of change, especially in a, a world that seems increasingly separate. We need creative ways to find solutions. And we need to remember that we are whole, not separate. Mm -hmm. um, and that we're human beings, not human doings. And there's nothing like a pandemic to give us a big hard pause and make us think about life differently. Reprioritize, uh, figure out what really is important and to help de-stress along the way. So. I break it down to three words, which is resilience, mindfulness, and creativity. Um, well, I've been to several of your seminars and creative experiences. Uh, we did a vision board mm -hmm. almost just a month ago, which was a lot of fun. Um, but how do you facilitate change normally uh, when you're doing your typical? Uh, is it a one-on-one, -on -one or what do you do? So I work with people one-on-one, -on -one and I also work in a group format, either working with a small organization or by holding retreats and classes myself. And I don't facilitate change. Change is just life. It's what happens. Ah. I just create the container for awareness to occur. Ah. Self-awareness and awareness with others. That is a game changer. It's like finding the button on an elevator that you didn't know that you had to get you to a different floor of conscious awareness sort of like an awakening. Uh, at a party, I might introduce myself as a cross between a therapist and a shaman. Mm. Uh, a lot of compassion and a little bit of magic, or as my client says, a compassionate poke with a sharp stick. <laughs> <laughs> right where you wouldn't need it. Right. Um, but I think, you know, under, under all the degrees, I have a master's degree in integrative coaching for the Maryland University of Integrative Health. I am professionally certified with ICF, which is the International Coaching Federation. I have published a book called From Chaos to Calm, Leading Change from the Inside Out. Uh, but beneath all that, all the certifications and the doings and the beings, I'm a process artist. So I'm first mm -hmm. a visual artist and a space holder uh, for imagination and transformation to occur. And here we are collectively at this time in this space when, wow, <laughs> there is nothing more than transformation that's occurring. When you think about a, a caterpillar that comes in and cocoons itself, we have been uh, either nudged or crowbarred into the condition <laughs> of cocooning. And that cocooning is going to yield to something. But just like the butterfly, when it emerges out of her cocoon, the former self must die mm. and the emergence cells which feed off of the what was in the cocoon determine if there be eye cells or lung cells or wing cells and all of that is determined in this primordial mush in the inside and so we as a culture and right now in this time and space with this this big ask of us how are we in the presence of a pandemic? We're being asked not just to cocoon, 
but to ask of us to be emergence cells. Who will we become in the presence of what's dying? And what are we needing to let go of so that we can emerge into something else? So on the tiny scale, working one with one on one, I really help people get really clear about what are we letting go of? What are we bridging towards? And what do we need to do to get there? And that's whether it's one on one or group or I mean, honestly, on the big scale, you know, all of us here together because we are we're just drops in a collective ocean. And it's really good to remember that we're not really that alone at all even though when it feels like we are so isolated. And the irony is right now we are isolated together. <laughs> and that is a oxymoron if I never ever heard of one. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny. I, I feel that, you know, I'm isolated. I, I see my son and, and maybe one other neighbor in the yard. We're not getting mm -hmm. close. But at the same time on Facebook, it's, it's a much nicer environment. You know, the connections we do have when I go to pick up, uh, food or something out from the local store, it, we're much, oh, so good to see you. It's almost like if you've ever been out of the out of the nation visiting a foreign land. And 22 you're, countries I've been to. I'm sorry? I've been to 22 countries and 47 U.S., 48 U.S. states. Okay, so this may happen more to you than it does some of us, but I was in uh, visiting France and I ran into somebody from my hometown and it was like, oh my gosh. And we spent the whole afternoon together. Normally we would have said hi and moved on, but you know, we're in an environment now where that touch and that, that chance we get to interact is more precious and more, mm -hmm. it seems to me. And I hope we can continue to do that. Um, yeah. And, and every minute it seems I'm on a different emotional roller coaster. I mean, I'm, I'm a business person who holds space for people to navigate change. And I play off of my own life experience. But right now, I'm having to do that from my clientele. Well, my entire world is being rocked just like everybody else's. And this is hard. I'll be honest, this is really hard. And in my own family, um, I have a family member who is the head of an ER department in a hospital. Mm -hmm. And that's this, this is real close Scary. to the bone uh, around the safety in our own family. I have a 78-year-old mom and... I mean, just this morning, I mean, she's showing, showing signs of symp symptoms of something and, and mm. we just don't know. So I was a basket case this morning and mm. now I put on my smiley face and I might be a basket case later and then I'll put on my smiley face. This is life, you know, and feeling feelings is a part of being human. And woo, I say at this moment, we are tickling the edges of creation. And we get Ooh. to be there at that kind of foaming at the edges. We can't quite grab it, can't, can't quite ride it well. It's just messy. It's just messy. And that is, that is really okay. Because this is a new normal that just doesn't feel okay. And that's You know, I'm going to argue with that. Uh, a friend of mine said this to me and it stuck. This is not the new normal. Mm. We don't know what the normal is yet. Well, it's the new normal now, right? It's it's this the new urgent situation right? <laughs> to deal with. Um, because but, always, there's always new normals. We're all, that's the thing about change is that we're always going through something. And we'll look back. Be normal in six months. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Like, that's um, a whole other conversation is what is normal? Um, well, let me ask then to change the topic just a little bit. What are you doing as that business owner wearing the business owner cap to adapt uh, during this time? I do a lot of breathing. Mm. I do a lot of permission to cry. Honestly, oh. I, I cry. Um, I walk out in nature, but I did that before. We paddleboard, but I did that before. I call on all my resources. I say in my book, From Chaos to Calm, Leading Change from the Inside Out, that there are three pillars of resilience, and that's mindfulness, nature, and creativity. Mindfulness is not empty mind nor full mind. It's an aware mind, just being aware. What am I feeling? Non-judgment. What is this? What do I notice? And maybe there's an action or maybe not, but just noticing helps kind of take the temperature of the emotional gauge, checking your sort of 
uh, emotional muscle. Like, how are things right now? Mindfulness. The second is nature. Is really getting to know your own nature. Like, what are your sensations right now? And how might that change in the presence of nature, the natural world, looking at nature, engaging with nature, sitting in nature. It's that interplay between the inner nature and the outer nature. And the third is creativity, not just for process sake, like let me make a thing. I'm sorry, not, not just for product thing, let me make a thing, but process. The experience of baking. Yeah, it's great to have something at the end, but it's really the engagement with all the parts and pieces where there's this energetic release. So my dance with change and uh, resilience in this current time is calling on my own resource tools and giving myself permission to be messy. To, I don't know the answers. I wrote, I have degrees and I've written books, but I, I am really just being present as a very raw human being because this is, that's what, that's what is. So I'd say resilience and permission, um, are, are very valuable tools right now. Um, well, I'm pleased to own and also promote, uh, one of your creative outlets that is both, uh, fun and practical. I'm just going to slide off camera real quick. Oh, you get yours. I'll get mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been out. Uh, I went to the Trader Joe's uh, yeah. yesterday in my mask. Uh, tell us a little bit about what your creative outlet here. All right. So here we go. But the creative outlet is, um, as I was just saying about the power of process, uh, I, back in January, had a lot of anxiety that was bubbling up. And I was watching the news and I said, this is coming here. Wow. And I saw what was happening in China. I saw eventually what was happening in Europe. And I saw all those masks. And uh, I called a family member who, who works in the hospital system. And I said, hey, can you bring us home some masks? And they said, no, use a bandana. And I went, okay. These are my three thoughts. One, you, you mean person for not bringing us home masks. Two, this is, this is as bad as I thought. Three, a bandana. I've always wanted to print my artwork on fabric. Ah. So here's a good opportunity. And so I took my anxiety and I put it into a process, which then became a product. So I have my conduit for change masks, which are my art each one is different they are hand signed pieces of art you can see down here where is it over here oh yeah I'm right across here where my sign oh there it is there where it my is. signature is right so they're signed they have adjustable elastics they've got a little nose bridge here this one is mine it needs to be tightened up just a little bit and what makes them unique is they also come with a little sachet. So those just came in the mail yesterday. Robert, I owe you a few. <laughs> so that you can um, wash them or you can keep them in your, in your wallet or your purse and the elastics don't fly around. Um, so I'm now solving a problem with people needing something to cover their face. Uh, and I'm doing so in an artful way. And so because I had asked my family member around the proper way to describe something that's not an official health product because mm. this is not a medical tool yet here we are maybe having to use these uh, actually on the front line simply because we don't have something else the good thing is um, he said language it wisely language it wisely and I said well number one why are these important because creativity resides at the edge of chaos. And when we tickle and tease our own creative juices, there's this magic element of empowerment that, that shows up. We might not understand it intellectually, but it's there. And when you think about like dressing up in a costume, it gives you a kind of alternate universe strength. So in the face of fear, with this pandemic, I say, 
put art on your face because this dance with creativity is a game changer. And when I started wearing these a month ago at some of the stores, people looked at me and said, where'd you get those from? They're so interesting. Instead of people being afraid, it became a conversation piece. Mm. And the same thing I think really needs to be our own story. You know, when we're doing things that seem different and strange, you know, how can we be creative with them? Um, so the first reason behind uh, these masks is creative empowerment. The second is to not touch your face. And you know, and you know all the reasons as to why you shouldn't touch your face. And then the third is um, that you will reduce the strain on the healthcare system for, um, for masks. And I want to be a part of the solution. And if my art is a piece of that, been great so yeah. each piece is different because they're cut in different ways i've got several different kinds of fabric uh, some of them have my my own branding on it the conduit for change which i think is the one that you were wearing they're fun they're colorful they're washable and they're adjustable and at the end of the day robert a lot has changed in our own household around economics with this and I know that some people are deeply, deeply, deeply suffering mm -hmm. and um, we're one of those with a yes and. And that is we're turning up the heat on our creative energy in order to adapt and create a solution so that we can both pay bills and be a part of solutions that matter. And in addition, I'm also employing um, one, if not maybe two sewing people who have mm. also lost their their work. So this has well, turned out to be something I, I had no idea it would be this big. Well, I'll add a couple things on there. While it's not medical grade and the doctors aren't going to be wearing it, uh, the CDC does publish on their website that uh, wearing a mask has a health benefit and they have recommended anybody going out in public uh, cover your mouth with something. So That's right. It's, and it's with, with nice. a bandana. And this is I did a lot of research before I chose my fabric. This is a tightly woven cotton, similar to a bandana fabric. Uh, you can make it more filtered by adding a paper coffee filter uh, and a piece of paper towel or one or the other or together if you wanted. And then you can throw that piece out and then you can wash your mask. So there are ways to make it uh, more filtration uh, special. Um, but essentially, the name of them is called Creativity is Contagious Art Masks. And again, in the face of fear, put art on your face. <laughs> and how do we order more when we run out? So my website is called conduitforchange.com, C-O-N-D-U-I-T-F-O-R, change.com. <laughs> and if you slide all the way to the bottom, you'll find a little link. Or you can go directly into my store. It's called The Store on the Conduit for Change site because I'm a coach. I, I, I work with people to help them navigate change. And now I'm selling masks. So it's a piece of my brand. It's not the brand, but it is a very big piece of the brand. So right. it's all the way on the bottom of the first page of the website. Well, uh, at one of my very special oh, one more. You can also find me on Facebook. So you can look me up, Annalise Gentili, on Facebook and I have certainly have posted it often, or you can go to Robert Quartz's page and look at his beautiful picture, and you can probably find the link right in there. there Scroll a little bit, um, and I got one for the entire family, so we're covered. Oh. Um, um, well, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, if you're going to go to Annalise's website, look through it. It's beautiful. It has some of her art. If you want her book, uh, you can purchase it maybe on the website. I know it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. So okay. even if you click on my website, it'll take you straight to Amazon. It's uh, on Kindle, paper version, and uh, the audio book is in process as we speak. I happen to have a signed copy. I don't to brag. A you do. <laughs> I do have a signed copy. Thank you. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Well, Raleigh, Annalise Gentili, Conduit for Change, this Everything you need is right here in your backyard. So drop by. Don't forget to support your favorite local business and tune in tomorrow for another exciting interview. Annalise, let's wave them out. Thank you, Robert, for having me. Thank Love you. you. Bye-bye.